I think if you want to simplify or compare an organism such as a fly to humans, then the only comparison you can make is that a fly itself is already complicated enough. So in humans, to simplify certain behavior to one gene or even a series of genes, I think we're still a long way off. As these Japanese macaque reveal, most behavior is too complex to be determined solely by genes. Learning surely has a part to play. Twenty years ago, one female macaque began collecting stones and playing with them. Try as they might, scientists could think of no beneficial reason for this behavior, and yet more and more monkeys copied her. Today, most of the females in this colony play with stones. Young macaque come to recognize the troop's favorite food trees and sleeping spots from their parents. They learn to interact with the world around them in the same way. This is how the troop's unique culture is formed. Same-sex behavior forms part of that culture. Most females in this troop form intense pair bonds with other females. Paul Vasey has been studying this behavior for the past six years. His findings have thrown new light on the study of homosexual behavior. When I first started studying female homosexual behavior in Japanese macaques, I, I was really interested in the whole question of why are, why are the females doing this? Why are they investing so much time and energy into this behavior which doesn't seem to have any relationship to promoting reproduction. So the homosexual behavior in the female Japanese macaques represented something of a paradox when viewed from this particular perspective. Vesey began by checking all the theories that have been put forward to explain homosexual behavior. In this colony, there seems to be no shortage of adult males looking for females. But even so, in science, everything has to be rigorously tested. Some researchers have suggested that animals engage in homosexual behavior only in situations where they lack opposite sex mates. What I found is that um, females will engage in homosexual behavior even when there are males present. And even when these males are sexually motivated, in other words, the males are soliciting them for sex, but the females still ignore the males and choose instead to engage in homosexual behavior. So if males are sometimes present, could females be behaving in this intimate way in order to attract the male and turn him on? No, because Vesey shows that if they can, females prefer to avoid males when engaging in homosexual behavior. Typically, the pair switch back and forth between sex and grooming each other. So this behavior doesn't attract males. But what about the theory that gives sex a social function? One of the theories that's been used to uh, explain homosexual behavior in animals is that it's a dominance interaction. And typically this explanation suggests that dominant individuals mount subordinate ones as a way of expressing their dominance. So I looked at this idea in Japanese macaques, and what I found was that both partners participate in mounting, both partners participate in being mounted. If both partners mount equally, could this behavior have something to do with an alliance, as suggested for baboons? For instance, when an aggressive male turns up, the females could support each other. If natural selection had favored this behavior as an adaptation to form alliances, we would expect that females would prefer to engage in homosexual behavior with the most powerful allies possible. That's not the case. Females don't tend to target particular dominant females, which would be valuable allies. Finally, what about parenting? Do these female pairs protect each other's young like lions and roseate terns? The answer appears to be no. 
At best, females ignore their partners young, and often they are highly aggressive towards them. So what is Weiss's hypothesis to explain the macaque's homosexual behavior? Um, most of my research has shown that there is no social function to the homosexual behavior. What my research does show is it seems that females are engaging in the behavior simply because it's sexually pleasurable. If females do engage in homosexual activity for their own pleasure, where does that leave the males? The homosexual behavior in these females does not stop them engaging in heterosexual sex and therefore does not appear to affect reproduction. They are bisexual, consorting briefly with a favored male before returning to partnership with their chosen female. This behavior holds for the animal kingdom generally. Most animals that engage in homosexual behavior are at some time also heterosexual. By suggesting that the main purpose of this behavior is simple pleasure, Vasey knows he's going out on a limb. Scientists taught to look for beneficial reasons for behavior are wary of suggesting that adult animals might simply be enjoying themselves. Link homosexual behavior and pleasure and you have an explosive mix. To gain access to a certain female, males not only have to chase off other males, but also her female partner. gets his female. If Vasey had suggested that heterosexual behavior is pleasurable, it wouldn't seem so controversial, because pleasure, in this case, has a reproductive goal. Vasey's work has put the sex back into homosexual behavior. And if pleasure, pure and simple, is important for macaques, could it be part of the story for other animals too? The answer is that until these ideas are tested by scientists, we just don't know. But what could be more pleasurable than a hot bath on a freezing cold day. These macaques live hundreds of miles further north. They have adapted to enjoy hot baths. Often, adaptation is a key to survival. But what if this adaptation is for pleasure? Might this also be true of sex? In primates, homosexual behavior is non-existent in some species, occasional in others, and, in these Japanese macaques, very common. Compare totally different species, and it seems that when it does occur, homosexual behavior in animals exists for many different reasons. Since Darwin's time, people have looked at the natural world in search of answers about themselves. But homosexual behavior in a few hundred species is a mere drop in the vast ocean of animal behavior. This is a science in its infancy, and each year, as more cases come to light, more questions are raised. Perhaps all that can be said is that homosexual behavior is as fascinating and diverse and complex as any other kind of behavior. And as such, it surely has to be worth studying, like any other form of natural behavior. For only when we can observe homosexual behavior in animals with open eyes and open minds can we even begin to ask the popular question, what does all this mean for us? <laughs>